So welcome again, everyone, to our reciprocity circle. We are starting from scratch because the technology uh, was not agreeing with us. So we are going to do this the old fashioned way by talking about uh, what we're asking for and discussing as a group how we might try to meet those needs. Taking a new approach, I wanted to make sure that we took advantage of some of the great information that is included in the slide presentation because it explains why reciprocity is useful and important and can really be helpful to the South Jersey cultural community. So um, obviously the same community agreements that always apply, apply to this session. We're gonna be open-minded. We're gonna tap into each other's collective knowledge. We're going to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves and turning the camera off or getting up if we need to. Uh, we're gonna make sure we're paying attention to confidentiality and not sharing things that are not, uh, you've not gotten permission to explicitly to share. Uh, and we want to take space and make space. So if you're someone who doesn't speak up a lot, this is a safe place for you to, to speak up and ask questions and, and get information. And at the same time, if you're a person who talks a lot, try and be mindful of that and encourage others to participate and speak. So beyond that, I also just wanted to remind everyone about these upcoming conversations um, in August for artists. There's a link there to sign up. These are really informal conversations that are driven by what you want to talk about so that we can be there to listen and to offer uh, resources and support. So take a look at that and hopefully you can join us next month as well. Um, but as far as reciprocity goes, we really want to um, understand what it is so that we can understand how it can be useful to us. So reciprocity was something that the reciprocity ring exercise was actually invented by a sociology professor at University of Michigan named Wayne Baker. And he says that reciprocity is built around asking for and giving help. It taps the collective knowledge networks and energy of a group to meet each other, each person's requests. And that is very important um, because together we have so much knowledge and so many assets that we bring to the table. Uh, we're not taking advantage of that. And reciprocity, the idea of it, and exercises like this can help us tap into that community. So had the technology worked for us, we would have taken a few moments and used Mentimeter to type in our specific personal need, want, or ask for the community. Those will show up on a whiteboard, and then we were going to discuss them and talk about how the group could collectively help to meet those needs. Um, that fell flat, so now we're using a shared Excel document, um, but I still wanted to show you what that would have looked like uh, with the actual request that we did get during the session. So as you can see, um, some of the people in the sessions, they, they made asks. I have listed them here. They range from everything from looking for space to perform and to host meetings and programs to um, artists who have had other careers and are about to retire and want to reconnect with the artist community to people looking for funders for upcoming programs. So there is a lot of different asks and um, a lot of really great resources. And I want to, before we uh, get into the, the nuts and bolts of the discussion, just remind everybody that um, you know reciprocity isn't something just for this particular meeting. It's something that we should be thinking about every day in our work as we uh, go along. So um, Adam Grant, who is another person, uh, best-selling author, wrote a book uh, about reciprocity and the idea of how it can help to um, build your professional uh, network and life. He says, cultures of productive generosity only exist when requesting and contributing help is part of the daily routine. So try and keep that in mind as you move along. What do you bring to the table that you can offer the community and how can you tap in to have the community help meet your needs as well? Some highlights from the session. Uh, we're about to hear all of the details, but I wanted to show you the, the little word cloud here uh, that really hones in on the, the things that were being asked, looking for each other within the community to find performers, collaborators, teaching artists, looking for funding, uh, looking for ideas, looking for space. Uh, those are just some of the things. So let's get into the discussion. If everyone would like to take just one moment to say their name, uh, what organization you work with or where you're you're from in South Jersey, then we can um, get the ball rolling on on the reciprocity portion of the event. So I'm just going to call out names because it'll be easier than uh, everyone guessing who's gone. Kathleen, uh, did you want to start us off and say hello? Hi, I'm Kathy Albert, and uh, I'm on the board of Burlington County Art Guild. 
and oh, also going for our Art Alliance. And I just wanted to tune in tonight to find out <laughs> what this is all about, really. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm sorry we got off to a rocky, rocky start here. <laughs> so we're um, That's okay. hopefully That's okay. by the end of it, you'll be yeah. happy you joined us. And I'm happy that you're okay. here. Thank you. And Polly, this was your idea for the introduction. So why don't you go next? I'm Polly Murray. I'm the artistic director of Children's Song of New Jersey. It's a community children's chorus in Camden County, and we're based in the Haddonfield, Cherry Hill area. Great, thanks for joining us. And Rob? Hi, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Rob Cuff. Uh, I live in Delanco, which is uh, near Cinnamons, and it's along one of the rivers. It's one of the towns along the river here. Um, I'm a painter. Um, I'm, uh, I'm about to retire from my full-time job, so, uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to get to know, you know, any other painters or artists or, uh, you know, just get to network with other people, because, uh, during COVID, just everybody kind of gets isolated, in, you know, including me, so, anyway. Very true. Well, we're glad you came out tonight. Thank you so much. I think we sure. can definitely find lots of ways for you to get connected. Right. And Diane, you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. I am with the Riverfront Renaissance Center for the Arts in Melville, New Jersey, way south. I'm the director there. And we offer programs and exhibits for artists, teaching opportunities as well, and professional workshop for artists when, when we're able to get those in our schedule. Do a lot with children's classes and things as well. Um, I'm an artist myself outside of my job doing commissioned art, etc. cetera. Uh, hopefully that helps me connect with our artists. We have artist memberships, but we are open to emerging artists, professional artists showing with us. And I'll give us, give our website when we get to some of that sort of thing. And nice to meet you, Rob Cuff. You can look us up. <laughs> okay, Diane. And I am happy to share whatever information you would like with the group. So Diane, if you want me to, to share the information about the Riverfront uh, Renaissance, I could certainly send that out with the post event email and right. um, give you guys an opportunity to stay connected after the event. Thank you. And I'll put my the website in the chat at some point so we can check it out. Thanks. Okay. And Diane, number two, not that you're second, but Diane, Hi everyone, I'm Diane Felson. I am with the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. I'm a program officer for the Cultural Alliance and Riverfront uh, Renaissance Center, as well as a number of other multidisciplinary and visual arts organizations throughout the state. I'm also a South Jersey resident, live in a very small borough in Camden County called Barrington, and um, almost a lifer. I moved to South Jersey when I was three years old. So. Nice to meet all of you. Thanks for joining us, Diane. We certainly are, you know, we, we love the State Council and the Arts every day because they help support all the arts in South Jersey. But today is a particularly great day because they had their annual meeting and made their grant announcements to organizations in South Jersey. So we are all jumping for joy over the uh, the hard work that has paid off in the increase that, that the arts and cultural sector is going to receive here in South Jersey. So we, um, you know, in addition to just being happy that, um, you know, we can continue to participate in the arts in South Jersey in any way, we're very excited because the increase allows us to help you connect more with your community and do more um, of the work that you're doing and, and find ways to support that. So it, it's a good day for everyone in the arts in South Jersey. So we should all feel really good about that. Um, I think we all need need something to feel really good about. So thank you, Diane. On behalf of South Jersey Arts and Culture, um, we're, we're very pleased today. Um, and Mary May, did you wanna go next and introduce yourself? Um, sure. Um, speaking of the State Council of the Arts, I just was uh, awarded a uh, Master Apprentice uh, grant today. I just got the notification for it, so. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Yay. What kind of work for what kind of apprenticeship? Uh, quilting. Quilting. Wonderful. That's one of my favorites. I love fiber art. So congratulations. And according to uh, Yvetta from uh, uh, Down Jersey Folklife Center, she says that uh, this is the first time that we've ever had anyone in New Jersey get a grant for 
that particular, uh, the folk arts for quilting. Nice. Well, yeah, lots I, of baskets and things like that, but not quilting. <laughs> it, it's great. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear it. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. And Stephen? Hi, I'm uh, like Rob. I, uh, I actually retired um, in June. So I'm a retired public school teacher, elementary teacher. Um, before I became a teacher, I was a, a playwright. And um, I'm going back into that. I'm looking, I live in Woodbury, New Jersey. I'm a member of the uh, Fall Arts Festival uh, organization, which is kind of like an arts council in my town. It's doing all kinds of events. And I'm interested in doing a collaborative, looking for theater artists, interested in doing collaborative projects. Great. Well, we can certainly help you find uh, some people that will be interested in that. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. You're welcome. And Tarina, I think you are our last one to introduce. All right. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Tarina Hill, and I am the founder of the Fashion Design Center of South Jersey, which is located in Camden. Um, and one of my friends owns the Idea Center, which received funding today, which is very exciting. I'm very proud of Cynthia. My daughter actually is taking um, animation class over the summer at Idea. So that's yeah, super, super exciting. Um, but yeah, we founded um, the Fashion Design Center. Well, we, me, me. <laughs> I'm a one woman show, but um, during. COVID, we opened in September of 2020. Um, I am an accessory designer. I have a master's in um, art with a focus on design and craft, and I study accessory design in New York City at FIT. And I've been doing this for over 25 years. I'm a leather crafter specifically, and I teach the fashion design certification program over at Mastery High School here in Thank you, busy lady. You do a yeah. lot. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, that I think that is everyone. Did everyone get a chance to go? Okay, great. Well, I'm I'm glad that we all got a little bit of time to introduce ourselves and say where we're from. It, it helps to kind of South Jersey's a big place. You know, there's eight counties here and I think two million people. It's it's definitely spread out. So let's talk just a little bit more. Um about the reciprocity circle. And my idea for doing it without the fun technology is just for us to go around and say what it is we're looking for um, from the community. It's actually better we have a smaller group because this works much better in groups of you know 10 uh, or less um, so that you can have time to talk. So we can, um, I think Stephen had already started talking about his need. He's looking for partners in uh, the theater realm. So I, my idea is that we will, we have a shared document here, which I have started in um, a Google Drive, and that shared document can be a, a tracker of sorts for the, um, for the asks that are being made during the reciprocity circle. And then that way I can disseminate that information to you afterwards and I can share this Excel screen, um, which should be a little bit easier than trying to have everyone go to the, the Mentimeter uh, link here. So let me share my Excel screen and everyone tell me, can you see my um, non-technology savvy mm -hmm. Excel sheet? Okay, so yes. this is this is also an idea that can live beyond this meeting. So once I start to enter in the stuff that we're talking about during the session, I'm gonna send this link to everyone. So at any point you can refer to this sheet, you can add to the sheet, you can offer assistance to someone on the sheet, you can um, put a new ask on the sheet. So it's just a place where you can uh, continue to connect and continue to try and tap into the network. Um, it's root of entry now, but it, I will say as a teaser, it's a pilot to something that we are building into uh, some website enhancements that we're having so that the community can always have a place to go and try and tap into that collective, um, the collective knowledge and uh, asset pool that we've already got here in South Jersey. So um, we'll, we'll start with a simple, simple way of, of doing it before we uh, try and move on to the Mentimeter version. Um, so, Stephen, do you want to tell us more about, do you have a specific project that you're working on that you're looking for collaborators or just generally looking to connect with community? 
Sure. Is there, do I have a time limit? I just want to make, cause I do tend to talk a lot. I so mean, I we have sure. about half an hour. I like to try and keep the sessions within an hour just to be respectful of everyone's okay. evening I can time, do like, but I yeah, can just, do, you know, yeah. a few minutes, I can do two and minutes. <laughs> see where it goes. Um, so I was a playwright in Philly for a number of years, uh, working with a number of feeders and, um, I taught, uh, playwriting and, it, uh, and actually ran a couple non playwriting nonprofits. Um, and uh, I, I'm coming, I've been coming back to that. My wife and I did a playwriting camp in South Jersey where we work with young people and had them write their own original plays um, so that they could see how, you know, how a play is developed and how it builds as actors are brought on board and set designers and directors and all of that. Um, I like, I just like doing things like that in a very collaborative way. And I'm, I'm really, I have a, a basic idea for what I want to do, but I'd really like to see if there's interest in South Jersey for uh, theater artists who might be interested in putting together um, a project uh, and maybe keep that project going past a, uh, a single production, um, actually turn it into a collective organization that really encourages um, original theater arts in, in South Jersey, because right now they're really isn't very much of that going on in this part of the state. So, so you're that. looking for just people who are interested in generally collaborating on theater projects? I'm, look, yeah, I'm looking South for, um, I'm looking, I, I guess, primarily writers, um, right. but, but then directors and actors, because the, the whole idea is that writers, directors and actors would be collaborating, working together to build uh, pieces that could be performed. Um, and the first project timeline I have is for doing something uh, over during Halloween weekend when kids are out trick or treating. And this is actually the whole idea is it's theater that is not really not not doesn't necessarily have to be performed in a theater space. It doesn't have to be overly produced. You know, there's not doesn't have to be any set building. It's called site specific theater, which means that the plays could be presented wherever people actually are. So you take the play and take the play out to where the audience actually is assembling rather than have audiences come into theaters. Um, and I know it's, it's, it's big and it's happening in Philly. It's big in New York. It's very big in Europe. And um, it just makes it easier to produce uh, theatrical works because you're not paying all the overhead. Okay. Well, does anyone in the group have any thoughts on resources? Diane Roberts? Just recently, well, here's a thought. Down in the Cape May area, there's a few theaters. Um, and recently, there was a gentleman that came to Millville and chose to open up in at Summer's Point. I can't recall right now. Bill Scarrett. I know he writes. He just produced his own play um, recently, like the last couple weekends. Just somebody that, so I can look him up. But Cape May might be the type of place that would be receptive to that. Like you said, it doesn't need to be in the theater, but the theater people are there. Um, Millville, not so much necessarily. Yes, I think, but you never know. But we have off Broad Street players that are yeah. local Leroy Theater. You might be familiar, but it might be that Cape May connection of somebody down there that's like Bill, who's new to the area, new to doing that, might have that energy to kind of collaborate. Possibly worth a shot. That's one thought. And you're not that far away, in Woodbury. No, not too bad. <laughs> Um, I'm Diane. You broke up a little when you said the last name. Did you say it was Bill Starrett? It's Starrett. Yeah, I, I could get his contact info. I have his email at some point. Yeah, it's just a one one thought. Um, okay. Well, thank Diane, we're just going to keep um, piggybacking Diane's one after the other for the whole meeting. But um, okay. I was thinking of South Camden Theater Company. They do original work. I'm sure you're aware, aware of them. Yeah, I'm aware of them. Yeah. Um, there was also recently a um, public art opportunity that was coming out through the New Jersey Environmental Protection Agency, actually. Um, the council helped them with putting the project together, but they were took proposals for public art projects associated with climate change and exactly kind of like what you're talking about. Something that's just performed. No, um, it doesn't have to be on a stage. It can just be out in the open. Um, I'm, I'm hearing that there's a strong possibility that um, this may continue for another year or two. So okay. it's just some place to follow mm -hmm. 
for possible funding for a project once you kind of get a team together. So it's just an organization to just kind of get on their social media and pay attention to some of their offerings. Right, right now, at the, it, I'm looking for the, I'm looking for the people. I'm looking for the team to start with, and then, you know, um, looking just looking to see that if there's an, even an interest in this in this you know this area. So. But, so are you part of any other groups of artists or performers, or would you mm -hmm. like to be connected with other organizations that- uh, Yeah, I, I, I would, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we can, I can certainly point you in the, the way of some links and resources you can check out for other organizations that are dedicated to theaters. And um, if you take a look at uh, the South Jersey cultural asset map, like we were talking about earlier, you can look specifically just for theaters so you okay. can find all of the theaters and see where they're geographically located how close they are to each other and then you could maybe think about um, some collaborations that made sense in any you know given neighborhood or area so, that you want to do a pop-up yeah. theater um, and so i'll send you some links sounds good well for that. thank um, you i have a recommendation i don't know if you know the uh, waterfront south theater in Camden, but it's owned by Robert Ingerman, and he is a, uh, he was a set designer before opening his own theater, and so um, he does original work, and when I say the sets are outrageously beautiful, and so uh, I'm sure being a set designer for many years before opening his own theater, he should, you know, have a pretty uh, healthy Rolodex. Robert Bingaman is his name. And he's very, very, uh, yeah, very friendly and open to collaboration. And his theater is beautiful, by the way. All right. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have it's to check that thing. out. Thank you. I, when I send you the information, I'll, um, I will e introduce you to, to Robert if you would like to. All right. Okay. To make that connection, I can do that for you. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else, I think we've gotten Stephen a good bit of assistance here. Does anyone else want to bring their uh, request or their, their want or need to the table? Um, I will, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure if, if I feel like it's kind of broad, but uh, I'll go for it. <laughs> so um, I've been, I just started applying for grants for this specific um, project that I want to bring to fruition. Um, I'm calling it the Stitch and Pitch um, program. And so the reason why I opened the Fashion Design Center of South Jersey is because for many, many years, I've been like guest speaker at a lot of different organizations. And um, just as a designer myself, people come to me constantly saying that they want to start their own line. They want to start a fashion business. Their kids are very creative and their kids want to get into the industry. And just, you know, being from North Jersey, I've only been in camp in um, August of May, year six. So being from North Jersey and going to school in New York City, there are a lot of resources and opportunities that I guess you kind of take for granted just because you're in the right place and you are able to connect the dots. And I guess down here in South Jersey is more of a vacuum and particularly a city like Camden that's come from um, hell and back. Basically, you know, it's on the rise, but, um, you know, the art and opportunities in the design world just aren't readily available. And so, but at the same time, when I go to speak to the uh, students at school, they all, in the sixth, seventh, eighth grade, all they want to do is grow up and become fashion designers. And then I feel like by the time I get to them at high school, 11th, 12th grade, all of their dreams have been, like, beaten out of them. And they are just trying to find a practical job. Like, their parents just want them to get a job so that they can contribute to the household. And I just feel like there's no more room for dreaming or aspiration. And I wanted to also help people find uh, additional stream of income. You know, even if they just learn how to sew and can do some tailoring and um, and things like that, you know, to be an additional source of income. So anyway, um, to kind of resolve one problem I find, which is people wanting to know how to use their talent and their skills to create their own fashion brand 
Um, even something small based on the comfort of home, whether they're just learning how to screen print T-shirts and sell it on the Etsy shop. You know, there's there's a, a learning curve, you know. And so the stitch and pitch opportunity is eight weeks where you're learning everything from um, how to manufacture your idea, how to get your idea at stores, how to um, create packaging, how to set up the website, like everything you know from need to know from A to Z within two, eight weeks to get you up and running in your own stone product or business. And then at the end, you have a business plan and you can then pitch it to the panel that will um, grant uh, $5,000 worth of um, seed money and resources to the winner. So with all that being said, I'm trying to have this kicked off in October. And um, the people who own the building that my business and on Hatton Avenue, they come on have come on as like a support for me to help market this and any uh, resources I need as far as getting the word out to the community. Uh, because what they do specifically is uh, they take abandoned buildings and abandoned homes and they refurbish them, renovate them, and make them available for sale to people in the community, which, you know, slows down the gentrification process and gives locals the opportunity at home ownership. And so they're very community, you know, passionate. Um, so I guess my ask, because at this point, uh, I've applied for a few grants that hopefully will come through, but um, I just, I feel a little wary that I'm not really, my ask isn't really funding. It's probably more like uh, support and sponsorship. Because, again, I am a one-woman show. I am teaching all day. I, I have a Girl Scout troop. I'm a mom. There are a lot of things that I have on my plate. I'm also a realtor. <laughs> and so I, I want to make this very, very successful so that it, it's something that I can do annually. But I, I would like any resources that can help the process, you know, to be known. Does that make sense? Yes. And it sounds okay. like a, it, it sounds very similar to a program we did a few years ago, what we called Arts Tank. It was a creative placemaking project, but it was the same. You got coaching and, and a little bit of education, came up with a plan, presented it to a panel, and there was a, a prize at the end. And it was it was a great program. Good. Yeah. So yeah. I, mean, I can certainly talk talk with you about logistics and how we set that up. Um, but I want to hear from the, the rest of the group and see if there's any other assists out there or thoughts for Tarina on um, it, the, the main thing that you're asking about are resources for funding the program, right? Yeah. Um, real quick, if that's okay. Um, yeah, so I guess you're kind of looking for sponsors outside of the grants that you've written, which again, you've got a thousand things on your plate. Sounds like a great program. Um, but uh, looking into things like that, I don't know if you've checked into Ocean First Foundation, um, What's it called? Ocean First? O Ocean First. It's a bank foundation. They're very good about small grants, but as in a couple thousand to five thousand. So it's Ocean First Foundation. Um, and also look for a, a lot of banks have, they have to do a certain amount of community give back. So a lot of them are at least able to give some kind of sponsorship like we find when we do our big sponsorship and we look for, you know, corporate a lot of the banks are very good with that. And right now, not a lot of people are asking for sponsorship because we've been kind of outside of a lot of these fundraising events and so on. So it might be a good time, again, to add something to your plate. But um, or if you have friends, volunteers that can, you know, you give them a list of local places or big corporations in that area. I know, again, it's a lot of work, but you, you could do well with piecing that together outside of the grants, especially these uh, the banks. I find are pretty giving, hopefully. So, hopefully. Just All right. um, my, my business um, account is with well, Wells Fargo. So, uh, between them and yeah. Ocean First, yeah, I'll start with those two. Thank you. Yeah, I look for an Ocean First, they have a foundation, but the local banks themselves do give uh, events and different kinds of things. We've done well with that. We have an event in um, 
in October to a concert and a community arts event on the riverfront. And I think they gave $3,500 for an event, the local, or that was partial local, 1,500 from the local and, and some from their, their actual foundation. But again, they love community activities. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, sorry. I, I I have to kind of check out early here. I, I'd like to I have to take care of something. Um, I'd, I'd like to uh, I guess catch up on the next meeting, which is uh, it's August. Uh, what is it? I'm sorry. It's August 25th, and okay. it's it's at 1 p.m. I will make sure that I include that also in the post email. And um, like I said, that the link to the sharing document that I'm filling in, what everyone's asking and what everyone's offering. I will send that to you so you can always get back to this and, um, you know, connect with everyone. Um, okay, great. And real way, quick, or... if, you, if you're looking, do you have a website for your art? Yes, it's uh, called robcuff.com. Okay, Our... simple. <laughs> so, great. Yeah. Okay, I'll, ch I'll check it out. And then, like I said, check out us and other galleries okay. down our way. Okay. Great. Thanks. It was nice. Nice meeting everybody. Yes, nice, nice to meet you too. Yeah. Hope to see you next month. Okay. Tarina, Tarina, I, I have some suggestions. If asking for sponsorships is so time consuming, so I, I hate I hate telling you more because I know that you know it adds more work to your plate. But three very Camden centric funders: Campbell Soup Foundation, Subaru, and uh, Cooper's Ferry Partnership. Um, all very Camden centric, and if if you're going to be basing this program on for Camden youth or Camden teenagers, um, that might be something they'd be interested in learning about and helping support you. Awesome, yeah. Uh, one of my close friends works at, um, for Camp, for Cooper Ferry Partnership. So um, yeah, I did make her aware of, because um, I mean, she's one of my best friends. So I did make her aware of what I'm doing, but I didn't do a direct like ask yet but maybe i will <laughs> that's that's one of the things we're trying to to kind of put out there is that it is okay to ask and to tap into your network i mean that's one of the benefits of being part of a community like this is that you're not alone and you don't have to you know bend for yourself there are lots of people out there that can help and are happy to do so because you know when you help someone it, it just brings a connection, you know, deeper and, and you, you get helped down the road. So um, reciprocity is, is a good thing for the community. Thank you so much for sharing. I have some thoughts for you too. I will um, email you offline so that- Yeah, I just wanna say, can I just try, Tarina, I just wanted to say, uh, I, I really uh, love how you're um, trying to get, like looking at kids at that age and trying to keep their dreams alive and going. I know as a teacher, I, I taught both middle school, elementary, middle school, and high school. And it is true. Once they get into high school, they get this feeling like, you know, the, the stuff that I wanted to do when I was younger, I just can't do. I'm just going to get whatever job. And yeah, it's so that, that always bothered me as a teacher because, you know, I'd like to see it's so important, I think, that kids get the opportunity to fulfill what, the, what they are really dreaming about. Fulfilling. I agree. Thank you. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, I have to meet with a real estate client at seven, so I have to go as well. Okay. Thank you so much for Thank joining us so today. Much, we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. You Bye. too. Okay. So there are three of you left I haven't shared. Polly, Diane, and Kathleen. Or Kathy. Yeah, Kathleen. Kathy. You go by Kathy, right? So does anyone want to jump in? We have... 10 more minutes? Yeah, sure. Uh, mine's just short. Um, we're just looking to expand uh, to try to attract more young singers to our program. Um, hmm. COVID really, uh, we took a huge hit from it because singing is like the worst spread. <laughs> so it's been really hard for us, but uh, looking for performance opportunities in South Jersey, um, and looking for more singers outlets where we can expand um, into other towns. So you're, you're looking to have singers join the group and you're looking for places to perform as well? So they're... Right. Okay. Right. Anyone have any thoughts on that? 
this is um, just a small opportunity. When I used to work for a nonprofit in South Jersey, um, I would work with the Department of Recreation in Morristown. Mm -hmm. and, and they do free concerts um, throughout the summer and they're all for, for the community. So if your group would be available to perform in the summer months, um, there's an opportunity to, to perform in Morristown and they, I'm sure they'd be willing to work with you and there might, um, they're always, they, they, they usually have slots to fill for the, the free performance series that they present to the community. Okay. And that's, that's probably a great idea, looking at local municipalities and seeing what events they have coming up that have musical um, talent and, you know, finding who's organizing that and reaching out to them. Because even if you're not on the, you know, on the docket this, this year, maybe next year, if you make that connection, you'll be able to um, find some other places to perform. And the, the group that um, I'm, a, I'm part of in Woodbury, uh, Fall Arts Festival, I, they kept those three letters, but they do all kinds of things. They do a thing called Lot 323 every Friday night in the summer, and mm -hmm. they have uh, bands and performers perform on their stage. Okay. So. If you take a look at, and I'll put it in the, I should have put this in the chat earlier. If you look at the South Jersey uh, cultural asset map, you might find some, some resources <laughs> there as far as places and festivals and um, organizers of events and things. Um, and I'll, I'll keep thinking about it. And I, I can always add to this sheet later too, if I'm able to, to come up with a specific resource, I'll reach out to you. Great, thanks. Anyone else with thoughts for, for Polly? What about the expanding to, to attract new singers? We can certainly help you with that at SJCA. We can put it in the newsletter or um, put it on the opportunities page of our website so that people know there's an opportunity there. Um, have you thought of partnering with other organizations that, that do musical and singing performances and maybe <clears throat> doing something collaboratively so that you, you can pool We're your singers together for performance? Partnering with uh, South Jersey Pops oh. for a performance. This is like, was supposed to be a year and a half ago <laughs> during <laughs> COVID. <laughs> so it's now gonna be, you know, next spring, <laughs> hopefully, you know. Um, at least it's still happening. I know the singers really got it the worst. I felt terrible for the all of the restrictions. So um, hopefully we're we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, though. At least you're making plans <laughs> before it was. You can even make plans. Uh, okay. Um, so we have just enough time for um, Diane or Kathleen to share any thoughts that you have, or if you have an ask that you want to make to the group, you? Diane. I guess I'll go real quick. Being an organization, um, we're always looking for new artists to see what we do to give them opportunities. Um, we're always looking for new artist instructors for both children's programs and professional arts education. We have a big roster of South Jersey artists as members and who just participate in our exhibits. But of course, we're always so we always want to help out when we can and. We're trying with some of our programs to assist artists too with exhibits. So if somebody's interested in showing with us and we talk to them, get to know their story, sometimes we can help cover some of the expenses um, that an exhibit in, entails, especially like a solo exhibit. So that's an opportunity we're looking for. Um, and just already Stephen Graff as an artist, I looked up his website, he's a very good artist, very talented, very accomplished. Or, sorry, Stephen, I'm, I used the playwright. I wrote down two nanny notes, Rob Cuff. That there's, was a, there's, a Stephen, there's a Stephen Graff who's a, a graffiti artist. Oh, uh, well, you know. <laughs> but you that's are. Not a, me. That's not me. Yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not you're the artist. written word artist here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, don't have a web, I don't have a website. No. I used okay. to, but not anymore. I'll keep that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Mary May, I know her from obviously our South Jersey area. And congrats. I know she had to leave the, the group, but. Um, um, yeah, so we're always looking to give opportunity to artists. So that's where we're at. But yeah, well, thank and you. I mean, out those. And even um, Tarina that left, I know she said she's a leather crafter. I mean, that would be an amazing. I'd love to, I'm going to look her up and see what she does. because That would be something to offer. And I know she's already in Camden. 
but we have, I follow some groups down where we are and she's very right in those, a lot of young people with their ideas for fashion lines and things, but you know, there could be an opportunity to teach a smaller type program with us down in South Jersey in our little area. We have a, a community group that they actually had a fashion show down by the little waterfront park area we have and uh, a lot of young, young kids and with really cool stuff. So, you know, to kind of encourage that dream to not dissipate, like you said, in high school where it goes away. We see that in our summer art camp right now that two youthful, youth group, youth, younger groups, they're all excited. The teen groups, eh, it's a tough, tough grab there. So <laughs> unfortunately, that's part of the arts, right? We have to fix that. So anyways, that's it. I'll be looking at all the others and see if I can offer any opportunities and fixes for anyone that's looking, so. Great. Well, thank you. That's that's yeah. equally important. The the givers have to be there as well as the people making asks. So it's uh, thank you for sharing your resources and information with us. Um, and that just leaves Kathleen. We have just a few minutes left. If you have an ask or something you want to bring to the table. Oh, I think you're on mute. I can unmute you. There we go. Uh, Burlington County Art Guild has been around since 1964, but um, we've really been having a hard time since uh, COVID started. And also we are having, diff we had difficulty before finding a place to meet. We started meeting at Mount Laurel Library. And then as Mount Laurel grew, um, so many more people are moving into Mount Laurel every day. We uh, kind of got spaced out of there. And then we went to Burlington County Library and then um, we were just really having a problem scheduling the public art, the public room. So we have meetings once a month. We have presentations by artists or art related things. And uh, we feature exhibits in different places all around the county. But um, our main thing is we, we kind of need a home someplace. And uh, COVID has made that even more difficult because we weren't allowed to meet in the library. So we have been doing some Zoom but um, I'm going to talk to our board and see if we can come up with some ideas and, and maybe you could help us with something like that. Okay. Certainly, I'm sure that we can help you find yeah. some space. And then I'll tune in again at the next meeting and maybe I'll get some um, other suggestions from the board members and things that they would like to ask or something. Okay. Sure. Sure. Do you um, have a budget or are you looking for free space? I think we're looking for free space. Um, and how big do you need it when you have these gatherings? How many people we are? We have around 35 people. Um, and you it, want to stay in the, the Mount Laurel area or are you? Well, we're, we, we are based in Morristown. Um, so we are generally in that area, but we do have people come from all over Burlington County. And so. when you have your programs, are they like daytime weekday programs or what is the typical? Um, they have typically been um, night programs because, night you know, night. people working, et cetera. And um, that was always successful. Sometimes we have a Saturday workshop. We, we do run workshops too, uh, usually like on a weekend or something like that, two days in a row or something. Okay. We have a lot of varied activities, but... <laughs> Over COVID, since COVID, we haven't had very much of anything. Yeah, there's a lot of that. You know, people had to to take a, a break from the in-person gatherings, but I do. I feel like it's it's starting to get better. So it's it's definitely worth planning to have a home right. if that's something that you yes. think would make your work um, easier to do. So um, I will take a look at the list of resources that we have amassed for Burlington County and see if I can. Uh, think of some potential places that might be open to discussions about letting you use space for your meetings or your programs. Um, does anyone else have anything they can offer to Kathleen right now? I used to work in Morristown um, for about 13 years, and when I was desperate, the Morristown Community House used to give me a deal on a room. Um, I know there's a fee there, but sometimes they can work with your budget. Great. I, uh, I have. I have um, had some success there. Yeah. But, um, it's not, I need some, we really need some place that's uh, reliable because like if we line up an artist to speak, sometimes we have to line them up like, you know, six months in ahead and then we can't have the place cancel at the last minute. So that's been a problem. 
I see. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see what we can find for you and definitely do join us next month. And um, when there are more people in the in the group, maybe or, or other faces uh, at the table, then you might get some different suggestions. But I think there are um, there are lots of <sighs> lots of places that are open to, to conversations about letting you know other organizations collaborate to use space or use it for community meetings and things like that. So I'm I think we can at least give you a few options to explore. For, to help you find something. Okay. Okay. Well, at, you know, as I said, I don't like to keep everyone beyond the hour. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Thank you so much for bearing with my um, rough start there with the technology and the choking and what have you. Um, that will definitely be edited out of the video, but you will receive a uh, post-event email that has a version of this event without the choking. And um, I will send around the link to this shared worksheet where you can see what everyone asked for today, find the email addresses to reach out to people. And, you know, like I said, keep using the list. You can add things to it. You can check back. Um, you know, you can refer it to friends, whatever you uh, want to do with it to, to make it a useful tool until we get the, the, real, the real tool developed from uh, our web developers. Uh, so, does anyone else have questions before we close, Stephen? I just have one question. Can I send you a uh, like a call for artists and uh, the, the things I need just to just to go out like sure. in your pipeline? That yep. way, I can see what I get back. <laughs> yeah, we are always happy to spread the word for you, and I'll connect you with some other theater organizations that can maybe cool. help you uh, find some some interested collaborators as well. Great. So I'm just gonna share my screen one last time just for a moment so that I can say thank you uh, to you for attending, uh, give you the link to a survey to let me know how you enjoyed the event and um, what we can do better. And you'll, that will also be in the email too. Um, and just to say thank you to our sponsors who make everything that we do possible. Um, the State Council on the Arts, obviously, uh, PNC Arts Alive, Ocean First Foundation, the Historic Commission and the New Jersey uh, Cultural Trust. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your time, and I hope to see you next month. But if you need something before then, you can always reach me. Um, we're working remotely still, but email, it works perfectly fine to get me, uh, probably the best way. So it's, uh, it's on our website, but it's jhain at sjca.net. I'll put that in the chat real quick for everyone. So thank you again. Have a great rest of your week thank and I will you. see you all in August. Take care. Bye everyone. Bye.